All right, the other thing that we need in order to work with series in this section is kind of how we um, do basic operations on series. So the specific operations that I want to talk about are arithmetic and derivatives. So um, for the first point, arithmetic, just arithmetic works with series. Any way that you would treat numbers for basic arithmetic, you can treat series. So um, that means add and subtract component-wise. And then um, multiply and divide the same way you would for like polynomials. You know, think kind of like the same way factoring works. Uh, let's see, um, the kind of like definition of zero is important for um, doing arithmetic with series, kind of when you add two things together, what makes them zero? So if um, the sum of from n equals zero to infinity of cn times x minus a to the n equals zero for all x in the interval of convergence, then that really only happens if cn equals zero for all m. And in the reverse is really where that ends up being helpful for you. So if you get that cn would be zero for all n, then you don't have to bother with this series. It's zero, um, which can maybe seem kind of like, um, like it's very intuitive. Of course, if you multiply everything by zero, you get zero. But we just have to say it to be really careful um, because sometimes things don't um, work the way you think they would in math. And then the trickiness comes from derivatives. So um, technically derivatives work the same way as um, powers or polynomials. The only thing is that because they're represented in this infinite form, I think that that can be a little bit um, like unclear sometimes. So if you've got some y equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, cn x minus a to the n, you're basically just taking derivatives of each term. So for example, I've got that y would be c0 times x minus a to the 0 plus c1 times x minus a plus c2 times x minus a squared. Um, let's do one more c3 times x minus a cubed. And then that would keep going on forever. If somebody gave you just this thing written down on paper, I know you could take that derivative. You would say, okay, well, the c0 goes away. c1 times x minus a, when I take a derivative, oh, I should be clear. This is a derivative with respect to x. Um, so c0 goes away. When I take derivative c1 times x minus a with respect to x, I just get c1 back. And then derivative of c2 times um, x minus a squared, I pull out a 2 and then take my x minus a down a power. And same thing with um, the cube term. I would pull down a 3, c3, x minus a squared, so on and so forth. but we want them to be packaged in this infinite series notation. So if I have this y right here, I already computed y prime, but if I want to represent that as an infinite series, I would say, okay, y prime of x is the infinite sum. Um, I kind of lost my zero term, so I guess I start from n equals 1, because that um, 
n equals 0, c0 term is gone. And then I look at my cn values still stay in the same place. But then I always multiply them by the power of n. See right here I had c2 times 2, c3 times 3. That came from because c2, c3, so on and so forth are always connected to powers 2, 3, so on and so forth. And then I just take my x's down a power from where they would have been originally. And you could go ahead and compute the second derivative. Then you would lose your c1 term right there, right? So we would have to start from c2. These are infinite series. And then our cn stay in the same place. I would have had um, an n out front, but kind of now an extra term is going to come. You could see taking the derivative of this term, I would have 3 times 2 times c3 times x minus a to the 1 power. So there's my n minus 1. You can just erase that like that. And then your x minus a term has dropped down another power. And you can take this for as many derivatives as you want. And we're actually going to do that quite often. And so sort of the question you might be asking is, why do we need these things? Why do I care if I can add series together? Why do I care about taking derivatives of them? Remember that the whole reason we're learning series um, back here, nope. Here, I said, our goal is going to be to plug series into differential equations and see what happens. Whenever you plug something into differential equations, you end up having to take their derivatives. Like you say, y equals e to the mx, y prime equals m e to the mx, so on and so forth. So we just learned that thing, how to take the derivatives. And then you have to manipulate everything the way it was written, like y double prime plus 6y um, equals 17. That's why you need the arithmetic. So I need to be able to plug series into ODEs. And then in order for the solution to the differential equation to make sense, we also need to be able to sort of um, simplify the problem so that we don't have a bunch of confusing series hanging around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe what that simplification should be like, and then we'll do an example. And we're going to do this so much in this section, so please, if there's only one thing you pay attention to in these videos, pay attention to what I'm about to say and the example in the next video. So I'm going to put a big star right there. We will rely on um, what I'm going to call like shifting series indexes. Mm, indices. In this section. So big star, very important thing. Um, and what that is, is we use it to um, simplify some of series. into a single series. So sort of what we want is sum plus sum plus sum goes to only one sum that pulls together all those things. In order to combine multiple sums, we need to have matching lower bounds. So if you had like this starts at n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. You can't add those together naturally. You would somehow have to make them all start in the same place. And you also have to have matching powers of x. The reason for the powers of x is 
um, so that you can represent it all in one series and so that you can like kind of identify a combination of coefficients that's important. That's not going to be clear in what we do today, but once you start working with differential equations, you'll see what those important combinations are. So in the next video, we'll do an example kind of showing that.